Hello, I thought I'd come on today and do the tutorial for the twist and pop card that um, we've all been talking about over on my blog. Um, this is the one I made using the Petal Garden Suite, which is uh, one of the new ranges from the Stampin' Up! catalogue. Um, it's got beautiful colours in it. You've got uh, the rich razzleberry, um, a bit of sweet sugar plum, and then some of the other papers have the Calypso Coral in. Um, and they're not colours that I would have originally put together, but they work so well. So the magic of this card is when you open it, where you get the, the insides all pop out. And um, these were all part of the Petal Garden Designer Series papers as well. And the stamps were from the Happy Birthday Gorgeous um, stamp set. Um, with the flowers I stamped from there too. So I'll show you how to create the uh, the sort of mechanism of the card. What you need is three pieces of card. One piece is going to be A4 in length. Um, it might be easier if I get a bit of different colour card to put down so you can see. A4 in length cut to four inches wide and this is going to be your outside cover uh, that you can um, do in coloured card and decorate how you please or you could do it in white card so that's A4 in length cut to four inches wide I will have all of the um, measurements down on the post on my blog that I'll leave a link below to then you need a piece that is 10 inches wide by three and a half inches 10 inches long sorry by three and a half inches wide and this is to make the um, the four panels and then the last piece you need but the most important piece is eight inches long by three and a half inches wide and this is what's going to make your um, twist and pop mechanism so I'll get on now and show you the scoring I went through lots of different techniques to try and find the easiest one because there was one that I did initially oops, sorry not the camera um, that you had to take a piece of A4 card and cut f four chunks out that were 11 centimeters long and five centimeters wide and then you had to score an inch up from the creases and it was just really complicated but this one I found to be the most straightforward so first of all we'll score the four panels so we take the piece of card that's 10 inches long by three and a half inches wide and we're going to score that at two and a half inches five inches and seven and a half inches and then we're going to do um, a series of mountain and valley folds. We start with a valley, then a mountain, and then another valley. And as always, give them a good burnish. So that's your four sections that you're going to decorate. Now I'll do the tricky part, the most important part. Right. So you take your piece of card that's 8 inches long and with the short side at the top of your scoreboard you're going to score down at 1 and 3 quarter inches. So 1 and 3 quarter inches. And then we're not going to score this time. What I want you to do is take a pencil or something that you can remove afterwards and make a mark at 2 and a quarter inches. And again, what I love about the Stampin' Up! scoreboard is the notches go right down from the numbers so that you can just sort of like put your score tool or your pencil down and see that you're getting it in exactly the right spot. So two and a quarter inches and five and three quarter inches. And then I want you to rotate the card round and mark in exactly the same place on the other side. So two and a quarter inches and five and three quarter inches. And then what you can do is you can either 
use your scoreboard or if you don't have a scoreboard you could if you've got one of these style trimmers you could line the score lines up in your trimmer and score down there you've got to measure the diagonal lines that you've made line them up along the score line and crease down the center but i'm going to use my scoreboard but i thought i'd just show you another method if you haven't got a scoreboard so you line up your two score lines uh two little marks sorry and score down like that and then you're going to get the other two score lines so we're going to make an x across our card and go from one down to the other this is another um i always make a mark i used a sharpie pen down the one of the grooves in my score tool so that you can um eyeball easier that you're on the straight on the same line right now we have to burnish all our creases so we'll burnish the center crease and then the two diagonals now and this is then the hardest part of the card finished because what we're going to do now is we're going to make the fold that does the magic so you just want to pinch these two up together and bring them in like so so I'll do it again so you can see so if you pinch these two crease lines together pinch them so they go in to the center lay them down on your board and give that a really good score And this is what's going to give you your pop when you open the card. Right, the other thing I need to do is to score the main piece of card in half. Sorry, didn't mean to knock you. Let's get my piece of card back so you can see. Right, so once we've got this this piece here all folded up, we're going to place it into the outside part of our card. Now, it actually would be easier to just get a pencil and mark that your centre where your centre is, so about two inches, just so you know where the centre of your card is. And then you're going to line up your mechanism to just a tiny, tiny fraction under that crease so that your card will still fold. But you don't want to go too far down because otherwise the mechanism will stop your card from opening properly. Now, ordinarily, I would use um, wet glue because I personally think it holds faster for longer. But I'm just going to use double-sided tape for now. Hope I can get the backs off. Right. So if you line that up to your center and then close the lid and then we're going to turn it round and stick the other side peel off the tape Two days in, I've still got pink dye down my fingernails where I try to dye some ribbon. I cannot get rid of it. <laughs> right, so are you ready? Let's see if it works. Ta-da! There we go. 
So now we're going to stick on our decorative sections. So what we're going to do here is you want to measure the centre centre line in with about the centre of your card. You can always, if you're sort of like a little bit unsure, you want to be perfect, you can just put a little mark that you can rub out afterwards and then you can see that you've got that dead centre. Now then you want to fold back one this side and then in, I'll mark it so you can see it, in this section here don't go below this score line otherwise the mechanism won't work so what we're going to do is we're going to add some tape into that section there again I would prefer to use wet glue but for speed we'll use tape Right, and then again, make sure before you stick it down, make sure you you're all lined up, and then push that piece down, and that's stuck. And then you're gonna go over to the other side, and on this side you're gonna st stick your tape on the bottom. So it's always the opposite. So let's get a couple more pieces of tape. I tried to record this video yesterday, but it was Sunday and everybody was out in their gardens and there was dogs barking and children screaming. <sighs> anyway, so that's that's the hard work done now the test is to see if it'll work the first time you fold it up it'll probably be a little bit stiff because you've got to get everything sort of like moving and going but it should all come together there we go then you fold it all down and you can once again give it a good burnish and then now we'll do the twist and pop I'll do it this way so you can see it there you go, the mechanism pops out and then as you close it, it all tucks neatly inside and yours will all be decorated beautifully. You could do them a nice one for Father's Day. I'll show you the decorated one again so you can see it. So you open it up. It is a wow, isn't it? I. I thought it was going to be so complicated that I wouldn't be able to do it, but found, you find the right method. There you go. So that's how you make a twist and pop card. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and um, hit that like button. And um, I will be back with another tutorial for you very soon. Bye bye for now.